So far we have seen what are simple and compound gear trains and also the epicyclic gear trains and now we are going to look at an arrangement which allows us a large velocity ratio or large gear reduction in a single stage. This arrangement is called as the worm and worm wheel. It essentially consists of a simple spur gear over here shown in green and it is engaging with uh, what you can view uh, to be a large bolt. Of course, it's not called a large bolt, it's called as the worm. And you can see this light blue thread of the worm is engaging with the teeth of the spur gear. The spur gear in this context is called as the worm wheel. Let us see how the two move. So here you can see as uh, the worm rotates, then every rotation of the worm pushes the spur gear or the worm wheel by one tooth. So if the worm wheel has 32 teeth, then for all of them to advance and complete one rotation, the worm will have to rotate 32 times. So the gear reduction here is 1 is to 32, which is a very large reduction, not possible by using simple spur gears. Let us now look at some of the variations that are made to this arrangement in practice. So here is the first variation where the worm has not one but three thread. In general such worms are called multi-start worms. Here we have three so it is called three-start worm. The pitch of all these threads, all these helices are identical. So they are just copies of each other rotated by 120 so they don't intersect. Uh, the pitch in this case is defined as the distance between two successive threads while the lead is defined as the distance actually moved in one rotation. Because there are three threads here, the lead will be three times the pitch. The advantage here is you can have multiple contacts between the worm and worm wheel and increasing number of contacts would increase contact area and uh, that would allow us to carry greater loads. Uh, here is another variation done to the same purpose to increase the load carrying capacity. Over here you will see the worm wheel is having its periphery cut in a uh, hourglass like fashion. In fact this is called as an hourglass. And uh, because of this the contact area between the worm and the worm wheel can be stepped up. So let us look at uh, this arrangement in cross section over here. So on the left you see a uh, cross section of the ordinary arrangement while here it is the hourglass arrangement and you see there is some additional contact area therefore allowing us some additional load carrying capacity. And finally here is the last variation where uh, we have uh, this worm inclined to the plane of the wheel, worm wheel. So let us see how the two are arranged in space. So you will see the plane of the worm wheel is making some angle with the worm axis and this allows uh, the worm thread to align well with the worm wheel teeth thus increasing the uh, contact area. The angle uh, over here is called as the lead angle. Uh, to think of it simply you can remember that any helical uh, element is like an inclined plane wound around a cylinder and the angle of inclination of that plane is nothing but this lead angle. Uh, if you want you can uh, follow this uh, link here and look up uh, the screw jack okay, which is nothing but the simple machine that employs a uh, helical thread and uh, because of this commonality uh, it gives us the idea of using even this arrangement as a simple machine. So let us see that arrangement here. So you can take a simple worm and worm wheel and attach a drum to the slow moving part which is the worm wheel of course and uh, if you attach the load here that will be moving slowly. If it moves slower it must be receiving a larger force and that is the mechanical advantage we will be getting in this case. So you will see this uh, worm is uh, rotating through several rotations while this wheel is moving uh, rotating only fraction of a rotation and slowly this load is rising.